Alrighty guys, it's time to talk about the Dope Sheet. The Dope Sheet is actually one of my favorite animation tools in Blender. It is so powerful that most of the animation that you do can be done through the Dope Sheet. It is a keyframe manipulation tool. It is a keyframe manipulation tool that you can use to drag keyframes over, scale them, retime them, change the interpolation of them, delete them, etc, etc. It's one of the reasons why I can work so quickly, and I think you guys will like it too. So let's go ahead and create the dope sheet first, simply by dragging this panel over and creating a dope sheet under this drop down. This will open up our dope sheet and show us that there, we have we have three keyframes here. Pretty simple to understand. These three keyframes directly correspond with the keyframes that we see in our timeline, and that's pretty self-explanatory. But what happens if we expand this Lockrot scale keyframe? We have all these keyframes here that we can play around with as well. So this involves a lot of the channels that we have, Lockrot scale channels, that we can also manipulate directly if we wanted to. Now, first things first, if you select any of these top four keyframes, it will simply select everything below it. If you don't, then you can select individual channels. Once you have a keyframe selected, you can hit G, just like any other transformation in Blender, hit G to translate, and hit S to scale. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the animation just so I can scale, because scaling uses the cursor as its origin. So I can actually scale like so, or like so. And scaling to keyframes has a very interesting effect on animation, in case you don't know, of speeding up or slowing down the animation. So I can actually scale the keyframes down and have the animation happen really fast, as you can see here. And you can scale it up to slow it down. So now it's gonna be super slow. There we go. So that is something that is very, very easy to do in the dope sheet. Retiming animation. And for timing, that is super, super nice. Of course, you can drag multiple keyframes around as well, but you can't rotate keyframes because they're all on a single line. So that wouldn't really do anything. Now, there's another thing you can do in the dope sheet that's very helpful, which is to change the handle types. Now, if you don't know what handle types are, I can go ahead and show you, but we'll talk about the graph editor in a separate video. I'm gonna go ahead and drag the graph editor into the scene here so we can understand what this is. And I will select a keyframe here. Let's see, where are we? There we go. Always make sure the correct object is selected so it shows the keyframes of that object. So as you can see here, we have a graph out of there which looks very complex. Don't worry about it for now, but I just wanna show you the handle types. These things here are handles, and if you change the handle type or extend it, it will change the curves as you can see here. Notice the curve is rounder as I scale it up and a little steeper as I scale it down. Now you can actually go here and select these keyframes in the dope sheet it will correspond to the graph editor, of course, and you can hit the V key to set keyframe handle type. And auto clamped is the default, but I'm gonna go ahead and change it to vector, and you can see how this changes. It basically shows that there is just a very sharp turn there, which should make it look almost like it's bouncing off something. So if we play this back, actually I need to speed this animation up a little bit, and uh, I can do that very easily in the dope sheet by scaling down, there we go. I'll scale it back down to 80, and you can see it looks kind of like it's bouncing off the ground. So that's something I didn't even need the graph editor for, I just wanted to show you how that affects it, but you can simply do all of that in the dope sheet, and I can change it back to auto clamped as well, so now it's much smoother. You can also change the interpolation in the dope sheet without looking at the graph editor, and that's with the T button, which shows you the set keyframe interpolation menu. You have constant, linear, and bezier. Let's go ahead and select all of them, make it constant, and you'll notice that now it just doesn't interpolate at all and sort of just jumps to it. If you do linear here, it's very bouncy, as you can see, very jarring as well. And you also have Bezier, which is the default, which is very smooth with an ease in and an ease out. You also have a couple other fun ones like Elastic, for example, which is pretty fun. You can make them sort of bounce. You can do, you can do a bounce one here, just like have Blender take care of that for you. And it's very nice. Um, this is all done in the dope sheet, by the way, completely done in the dope sheet, no graph out of their stuff, very, very powerful. As you create keyframes, they will appear in the dope sheet very naturally, and you can delete them as well in the dope sheet by hitting the X key, just like you would delete something in the viewport. So as you can see, it's very intuitive and very powerful. With a little bit of know-how, you may not even have to touch the graph editor at all. But the graph editor does have its uses, and we'll talk about that in the next video. So I hope you guys realize how great the dope sheet is. I love it. I hope you love it. And I hope you guys found this helpful.